Good morning, my friends, and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. Today, we celebrate the 12th Friday in Ordinary Time, and our Mass today is offered for the repose of the souls of Alejandro Tonko, Gwen P., Maria and Andres Menendez Sr., Jose Eliazo, and in a very special way, we pray for peace and unity in our country. The Lord is the strength of His people, a saving refuge for the one He has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we are gathered in this Eucharistic celebration, we call to mind our sins and failures. We ask God to grant us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. In the tenth month of the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his whole army advanced against Jerusalem and camped around it and built siege walls on every side. The siege of the city continued until the eleventh year of Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, when famine had gripped the city, and the people had no more bread. The city walls were breached. Then the king and all the soldiers left the city by night, through the gate between the two walls that was near the king's garden. Since the Chaldeans had the city surrounded, they went in the, the direction of the Arab, Arabah. But the Chaldean army pursued the king and overtook him in the desert near Jericho, abandoned by his whole army. The king was therefore arrested and brought to Riblah, to the king of Babylon, who pronounced sentence on him. He had Zedekiah's sons slain before his eyes. Then he blinded Zedekiah, bound him with fetters, and had him brought to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, this was in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, captain of the bodyguard, came to Jerusalem as the representative of the king of Babylon. He burned the house of the Lord, the palace of the king, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every large building was destroyed by fire. Then the Chaldean troops, who were with the captain of the guard, tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, led into exile the last of the people remaining in the city and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon, and the last of the artisans. But some of the country's poor, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, left behind as vine dressers and farmers. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land, we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Though there are captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs and our despoilers urge us to be joyous, sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I ever forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. 
if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and then a leper approached him, approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it, be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. Dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, compared to today, leprosy was the most terrible illness in the ancient world. William Barclay tells us that leprosy might be in with, little, with little nodules which go on to ulcerate. The ulcers develop a foul discharge, the eyebrows fall out, the eyes become staring. The vocal cords become ulcerated and the voice becomes hoarse and the breath wheezes. The hands and feet always ulcerate. Slowly, the sufferer becomes a mass of ulcerated growths. Or another kind of le le leprosy might begin with the loss of all sensation in some part of the body. The nerve trunks are affected. The muscles waste away. The tendons contract until the hands are like claws. There follows ulceration of the hands and feet. Then comes the progressive loss of fingers and toes, until in the end, a whole hand or a whole foot may drop off. It is a kind of terrible progress, uh, progressive death in which a man dies by inches. So whatever kind of, uh, whatever kind of leprosy a man suffers, the physical condition of the leper was terrible. But there was something which made it worse. That lepers, that lepers were treated as, as if they were, in effect, dead men. Immediately after diagnosis, the leper was absolutely and completely banished from human society. There never has been any disease which so separated a man from his fellow men as leprosy did. And this was the man whom Jesus touched. To a Jew, there would be no more amazing sentence in the New Testament than this simple statement. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched the leper. Equally interesting though, Barclay says, is how the leper approached Jesus. First, the leper came to Jesus with confidence. He had no doubt that if Jesus willed, Jesus could make him clean. He knew too well that Jesus would not stone him away. He had such perfect confidence that Jesus shall be willing to welcome him. A man, anyone else, uh, welcome him, a, a man anyone else would have driven away. Secondly, the leper came with humility. He did not demand healing. He only said, if you will, you can make me clean. It was as if he said, I know that other man will flee from me and will have nothing to do with me. I know that I have no claim on you, but perhaps in your generosity, you will give your power even to such as I am. 
there is nothing close to the heart of Jesus than a humble heart. And finally, the leper came with, with reverence. The Greek verb used is proskunein, and that word is never used of anything but worship of the gods. This leper never, ha never have told anyone what he thought Jesus was, but he knew that in the presence of God, the presence of Jesus, he was in the presence of God. By how he approached Jesus, by his actions, by the manner in which he approaches Jesus, he knew that he was in the presence of God. Friends, in this time of pandemic, and even when not in pandemic, we are inspired by this leper to come to Jesus with confidence, to come to him with humility, and most of all, to come to him with reverence. He is God, and there is no other. He alone can heal us, and yes, even with a mere touch of his hand. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the man with leprosy, with great faith, put his life in the hands of Jesus and then received the gift of healing. We pray for each other that we may have the same trust in God as did the man in the gospel, and so walk without fear, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that nations may learn a lesson from the people of Judah long ago and so not be arrogant about their own military strength but rather look to building up their moral strength, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick in our hospitals and nursing homes, along with those cared for in their own homes, that the healing of Christ may give them patience, trust, hope, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those communities around whose churches have been destroyed by terrorists, that in their distress they will understand that they themselves are the body of Christ and temples of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in the silence of our hearts, we offer to the Lord all our prayers and petitions. Lord our God, may we, like your people of old, remember your holy city Jerusalem, where your Son redeemed the world may it be once again your city of peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine. We offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, Alberto, our Coadjutor Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at a Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him 
who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for coming and for joining us in this Eucharistic celebration. See you, those of you who have uh, slots, uh, see you in our weekend uh, masses please be reminded of our new office hours as well as our new confession times please visit our website www.sptacc.org for updated information the lord be with you and may almighty god bless and keep you and your loved ones in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen our celebration has been offered now go Always approach Jesus with reverence. Thanks be to God.